I've always thought they'd be the perfect yuppie pet. You like having a nice, warm, fuzzy animal, and then you feed it up, and then you want to go off to South America for the winter. You open up the freezer, throw it in the freezer, close the lid, go away. We are able to monitor these animals without going into the room. And the hibernators don't eat, they don't drink, they don't urinate or defecate in their cages. So you basically don't have to do much with them. Come back in the spring, take it out, it warms up, it runs around, and you've got your pet. And you wouldn't be wrong by saying they're the coolest animal you've ever met because they are quite cold. I'm interested in Arctic ground squirrels, not because I'm so much interested in squirrels themselves, but I think that they make a wonderful platform for investigations of questions that I am interested in. In particular, I'm interested in adaptations of animals to extreme and variable environments. One of the most unique things about the Arctic ground squirrels is that they exhibit the lowest body temperature ever measured in a mammal, which is minus 2.9 degrees Celsius, which is below the freezing point of water, but it's also below the freezing point of their own tissues. They enter what's called a supercooled state. Their, their blood and and bodily fluids are, are below the freezing point, um, but they don't turn to ice. So they don't have antifreeze proteins. They're in a, this state that at any point in time they could freeze. Why they don't freeze, uh, we really don't know the answer to that. But what we've learned, one thing, is that it's not sustainable for, though they stay in hibernation all through the winter, they're going in and out of the torpid state. And that's manifested in the ground squirrel by every three weeks or so, they turn on that brown fat. They generate heat through a specialized organ called brown adipose tissue. And brown adipose tissue is packed with mitochondria and it has what we call uncoupled electron transport chain, which generates heat. It acts like heat tape around their, their heart and their lungs to to warm those organs up so they can begin to breathe faster and pump warming blood around the body. Then they begin to shiver. And uh, just as what happens when we shiver, they produce heat and warm their bodies up from that sub-zero uh, state right back up to a normal body temperature and remain there at 37, 36 degrees C, same as you and I, for about 12 hours. And then they drift back down into torpor. And they're not built this way through the whole summer. They restrict their fattening period to about three weeks. In three weeks time, they'll go from five, six percent body fat, very lean, lean as our leanest athletes, to 45 or 50 percent body fat, three weeks. We know that among ground squirrels, the Arctic ground squirrel is the largest, about the size of a softball and probably about a kilogram so being larger allows them to lay down more fat, carry absolutely and relatively more fat on their body, so that gives them a greater energy reserve. Other hibernators seem to be very responsive to changes in ambient temperature in the springtime to time their emergence from hibernation, their end of hibernation. Arctic ground squirrels don't seem to be sensitive at all to temperature changes in the spring months. What is fascinating is they end hibernation when it's effectively winter, when you start looking around you. The only thing that doesn't look winter is the sun. The sun is up in April and May, but it's cold and there is not reliable food for them for maybe two, two and a half months when they first come to high body temperature. And this is after they haven't eaten for well over 200 days, almost 300 days. And they're still not gonna eat for a couple more months. So they have to survive the hibernation season with enough fat that they can go through their breeding season. Females are gestating through the month of May and are giving birth in late May before green up. It's really extraordinary. Yeah.